Let's make a pico border for this blanket, but first let's choose a color. At long last, I have finished my mitered square blanket. This, this is 37 inches by about 45 inches. It's almost square. And I really wanted it to be perfect to just put over my lap in the winter time when I'm watching TV or something like that. Um, but I didn't want it to be too big. So now I get to choose what I want to use for the border. And I'm trying to pick out a yarn to do this. I'm going to crochet a single crochet stitch all the way around. And then I'm gonna go back around and do a pico stitch. And I'll show you what, how that is. That's so easy to do and it really looks good. So I thought I would talk about borders. The reason I'm putting a border on this is because the border just ties it all together. It's very much like putting a good mat and frame on a piece of art. Okay, not that this is a piece of art, but um, it just, it gives it that great finished look that is so much better than you expect. I thought ahead of time, I was trying to pick out a color. I thought maybe the blue. Um, I knew I wanted something darker. I didn't want a white border or um, I, uh, pink border. So I got some different colors here and we're gonna look at this uh, so I can explain why I'm picking what I'm picking, okay? The other thing that I want you to see is that on the back, I've got some yarn trying to get away. On the back, I have lots of ends and I'm gonna go sit and binge watch some old British TV show today in my studio and take a crochet hook and just pull all of these loose ends at every joint um, there's these little tags. I've tried to actually leave them longer so they're easier to pull through than the little short ones. And there's a, there's just one or two um, on the front side where I've changed yarn colors and I'll pull those through to the back. Um, okay, so let's look at the different colors for the border. I've just laid a, kind of a long clump of yarn along the edge to get just a feel for what a border would look like, what that color would look like with that. I can tell I don't want a pale. I just, that doesn't do anything for me. It doesn't pop, it doesn't make a statement, it doesn't tie it together. Now that's just my gut instinct. Um, now I think this is something that most creative people have in common, is that they can look at something in a very unfinished state and imagine what it looks like in a finished state. Like if you're, if you love to sew, Perhaps you can look at a pattern and you can look at a fabric and in your mind you can imagine the two together and what a finished dress would look like in that fabric. Um, that's, you, a lot of people do that when they're looking at knitting patterns or crochet patterns or people can look at yarn together and imagine it woven. So that's kind of a creative bent. So I know I don't want that. Let's look over at this one that I messed up. This is a color that I actually also used in here, I think, or very close to it, it's the purple. This wouldn't be horrible along the edge. It's a little darker. I guess I'm just, I intuitively know I want something darker to really pull it together. This is a busy blanket and it takes a bold color to pull it together and unite it. Okay, so I don't think I want that one. Not too bad. Then I have three darker colors. I have this. That's a possibility, but I think, I don't know why. To me, it looks, I thought I might like that, but I, I think it looks too different from the blanket, even though it is kind of a blue. This is a, this is, the whole blanket is acrylic, because I want to be able to wash it. This is an impeccable. It's a beautiful teal. I don't, teal never seems to show up well in um, on the camera, but that's one of those really royal, uh, jewel tone teals. Here is a deep green. I think that would work. Maybe a little better than the teal. It's nice and dark, but it doesn't make its own statement. It doesn't call attention to itself. But the one I think I knew ahead of time that I would like the most is this. I thought I had a lot of that, and this is all I could find. I do have it, um, I have some new skeins of Simply Soft, and I actually I think that's what that is. Um, it's the lovely deep brick red. But I can just see this blanket rimmed in that red, and I can just see it pulling it all together, and it would be, 
it will be a very serious contrast. There's no red in this blanket except for kind of little splatterings in here. As Kate Jackson would say, this is definitely a scrappy blanket because you can see I, d I didn't hesitate to change colors here, here, and some of those variegated blocks. Um, that was fun. The thing that ties it together is the miter that runs in these diagonals all the way through the blanket. Matter of fact, I enjoy this so much I'm tempted to pick some different yarns and not make it quite so scrappy. Pick like only three colors and do it in a pattern. I just eyeballed this. I would finish one square and look at what I had so far and say, hmm, what color do I want next? That's how I picked the next color. So I'm really, yeah, I'm very tempted to use. I thought I had a whole bunch of this in a in a true worsted weight. Um but I don't know. I can't find it in my yarn stash, which is not surprising because my yarn stash is a mess. Okay, so that's the. I'm going to go work on the straggler loose ends, and then hopefully today I will start in on my border, and you can see what it looks like. All right, we're getting there. Now all of the strings that are on the um, edges, I can just uh, incorporate them into that first crochet row, so I'm not going to bother to pull them through. I've chosen a G hook. It's kind of a nice in-between size. don't want anything too big. Um, and I do want to pull, I think I want to pull these threads, of course, into the color that they correspond to. Weaving in these ends is such an important thing to do, and it was kind of fun. I watched um, a video that I've, I've been watching on YouTube. It's an old BBC series from 1970 called A Family at War, and it was set during all the war years in England, uh, during World War II, and it's just this family and all of the troubles they go through, which I think a lot of them were pretty standard for families in England. They were from Liverpool. This is also a really good time to give your blanket blanket a once over with your um, careful eyes. And I found some knots that I had tied that weren't very secure and I, this was a good chance to retie them. I'm gonna also give this blanket a wet finish. And before you put it in uh, to wash or, or dryer, you wanna make sure all those knots are very secure. Of course, you can thread these little ends into your work as you go, and that would probably be the smarter thing to do, but I'm kind of lazy, and I'd rather put it all off to the end and do it in one hunt because it's a little bit of a boring job. But I will say that having a small crochet hook and being able to thread those, uh, those ends through there, that's a really important skill to have. So if you're a knitter, don't neglect your simple crochet skills. I have a brand new skein of Karen Simply Soft. This is a lovely, silky feeling uh, acrylic yarn that I really enjoy using. Um, so I'm going to use this. I'm going to give this a try as my watercolor. We'll see what it looks like. I think what I'll do is tie this on to this corner thread that I had left over. Give it a good, nice, secure base. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay those two yarns along the edge. Now this is not an exact science, but you can see the stitches along here, and this is knit, and then I have crochet, but I'm gonna just make them correspond. You don't wanna have extra, you don't wanna have bulky, uh, you don't have too many crochet stitches or it's going to spread out your um, knit uh, stitches and you don't want to have too few or it's going to pull it together. They need to really balance, um, the gauge should balance well. So here we go. I'm going to go through the corner really where I already did. Pull that through.
Again, just like before when I was picking up stitches along the edge, you want to make sure that you get two. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I can't really see the camera right now, but there's um, two yarns here on this very edge. Uh, the way the stitch is constructed and you want to pick up both of them and not just one. This is something you see in crochet a lot. If you guys are, if you're crocheters, you know what I mean. And you just don't want to have any tension on your crochet stitches. I used to crochet a ton and then this thumb started to hurt because it's kept in this kind of position where it's pressed against the crochet hook even more so than this thumb. And um, that repeated position and pressure, I think did damage to my thumb. So I really don't crochet anymore. This is actually pretty rare, but um, this is just the easiest way to get a border. Crochet is pretty fast. So as I'm looking at this, I just wanna make sure, I'm not making them too tight, they should lay nice and flat. Okay, so we'll give this a shot. I always put three crochet stitches around the corner. If you just put one, it's going to pull it, try to pull it straight. And you want to make sure to ease into that corner. So I'm kind of looking for a good spot. Hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to kind of join it. Okay, now I've got a border around the whole outside. I'm very pleased with that. So now we'll start the Pico stitch. Now I'll show you how to do this Pico stitch. You see that I am starting. I think I will go ahead and uh, go that way so I can get above that first row. I'm going to go ahead, I just need to figure out what I want to do. Maybe on this third one, I'm going to do three chain stitches. And then I'm going to come down and put my hook through the bottom of V and pull it all the way through. There's no yarning over, all the way through. And then and then you can see, here's the stitch I just did, so I want the next one. And this little hump that I've just made, that's what's distinctive about the Pico. Now some people, some people would use um, a single crochet here, some people would even do a double crochet and make a very big Pico on top. Some people would do a slip stitch where you just go straight in, pull this, and go straight through. And I'm not going to do that. I do want to build up a bit of a border, so I'm going to use a single crochet. So again, I'm going to go one, two, and here's my third one. And after I do that third one, I'm going to build the pico on top of it. And then go down to that V at the bottom, 
pull all the way through. I find when you pull all the way through, it gives you a nice tight little point. And I think that looks better. <clears throat> Let's do it one more time. I think if I have three of them, you'll be able to really see what it looks like. <clears throat> so now I'm starting on this third crochet. One, two, three chains. Go down to the V at the base of that chain. Yarn over and pull all the way through. And then go straight into your next stitch. Let me get a little ways away from this and you can see what it's going to look like. We're going to have a border that kind of looks like that. And I really like that look. It looks kind of like a little castle. <laughs> you know what I mean? With this crenellated edging on the top. And I just think it's very attractive. Now when I come, I have no idea how many stitches I have. I'm going to do every third one. Hopefully by the time I come around here, I'll go around the corner and I'll be able to stick another one in here somewhere. Um, not like anybody's going to be examining my blanket to see how many stitches I did. Okay, so that's the Pico stitch. And you can learn that online from just a gazillion places. Uh, I'll probably share a little um, tag up there that will take you to the one I looked at to remind myself how to do it. This morning I finished the border on my mitered square blanket. I want you to look at the border I picked. This is a Pico border as I said before. And it was very easy to do and it turned out well. I really wanted something strong and contrasting to tie this busy, busy blanket together. And I think that worked really well. Some people may think that was not the best color choice, but I'm satisfied with it. I really like it. But you could really do anything. On the other side, it's really interesting, even though that's the unfinished side, that, that ridge right there is not too bad looking. There's still, still some little tails left, but um, that really doesn't look doesn't look bad for a, a wrong side of the blanket. All right, so there it is. I hope you'll try the mitered square. I may I may do more of these. I really enjoyed having this project to just pick up and start back up on. It's so easy. And um, next time I might just pick three colors, two colors, three colors, and do a real pattern and see how that turns out. But this was a great use of some old yarn, just bits and pieces. It's a wonderful stash buster. Thanks, folks. Bye. What a fun blanket that was. I really do hope you give this a try and enjoy it. And try that Pico border. It looks great. Bye-bye, guys.